Hey guys, Clyde here live at the Leech Berg Light Studio. Hey, I want to give a shout out to Shannon Wood for uh, his rendition of an X Lights 4 uh, logo. And uh, he sent me over the wallpaper. It looks amazing. This is my 50 inch monitor, by the way. I love it. Uh, it can't get any better than this. Um, down to my right, down over here, I have a uh, 32 inch and then I have a little tiny 24 inch over here down below. Um, but anyway, I wanted to uh, I wanted to do a a, a video for you guys. Um, I've seen in the past uh, few days, in the past week, I've seen at least two or three questions on how to make concentric stars or how to build star models in X lights. And what I thought I'd do is uh, I thought I'd upload a video that I'd already recorded, already had produced, never uploaded it, and I found it, went to do it, and when I reviewed it, I realized that there were some updates to the video, so I'm here to shoot a new one. What I wanted to do is I wanted to bring this up here. This is uh, from last summer. This is the, uh, the beginning of uh, a sequence that I created which eventually I added in I went ahead and added this actual sequence into my show for 2015 I'll go ahead and link the video but as you can see here this is my 250 pixel star and I had to create a model for it and in order to create this model um, what I did was I created five separate models and to do the different effects on the models, I, the, the two models that I made were I made uh, five individual stars, a small one, next size up, next size up, and up, and then I had lines that I made. And that was one, two, three, four, and five. Each of these models mirror each other. Now if you look over here, you can see that. You can see the start channel for star number one and string number one are identical. The same for two, three, four, and five. Now the reason for this is because if you mirror or m make two models for the same model, two different types of models, you can render effects differently on each, uh, on each model, creating a different effect. For example, just as you just saw in this, in this, star, in this uh, part of the sequence, it chases between the layers. This is a uh, bars going up and down on the whole model. And to create those effects, I used both this model and this model. And what I did to create this model is let's here we'll just we'll just pull out one of these stars. Actually, let's let's go back to the beginning one. There we go. I always start my stars in the middle, don't ask me why, but I always put my top pixel, my first pixel on the top, and I go clockwise. So whenever I made my Megatree star a number of years ago, um, the, the pixel started up on the top right, went clockwise direction. Now knowing this, this is how I created all of my stars. All of my stars do the exact same thing, they're built the same way. Um, and as you can tell just cycling through them to make it look neat or pretty it's a pain in the neck so whenever I made this model and copied it into my actual layout design what happened was it was hard to move it around whenever it didn't fit where I wanted it to or to resize it all just to fit to make it look good it was hard to deal with it but it did the job it was able to create sequencing and if I go into the sequencer tab you can see here it is I can uh, I can render effects right here as bars onto the uh, star model, but this is only displaying one of the models. If I go ahead and and put bars, whoops! If I put bars onto all of them, let's copy it and we'll just paste it down here. Paste and we'll render. Um, if if we're not, if we're only selecting one, only one's coming up on the model preview. If we go to the whole house preview, then you can see it just a little bit better. But as you can see, it's kind of off. If you don't have your stars all through, all five lined up in the same way, then it doesn't render the effect the same. So what happens whenever you, let's copy this, and you use the string version of the model. Now I didn't talk about that. All I did was, is I just went into models, you can you can you can set up the models very simply. You can go in. You can create your new model. I labeled it as star. I put for my first first star, the inner star is 30, and my start channel. And I I went around and used my start channels. I also added five points to it, and my total node count is 30. So and then I marked I demarked that I started at the top center and went clockwise around the star. Once you put that layer of data in, it was easy to just copy this model and paste it here, copy this model, 
paste it here, copy this model, and then I created all five stars very, very quickly. It was very easy to do. Once this was done, I had created the stars. Now I did the exact same thing with the strings. If I look at that, all I did was I created a string, and I called it string one. I called it single line, and that's the display type is a single line, and the type of RGB nodes, and then 30, and I used the exact same channel numbers to start and end with. Now I put bottom left here, as in over here, the left to right, and that way I know which way the, the, the uh, string starts whenever I connect it up. Um, so once I created and copied and, and made the copies of those and, and adjusted for the channels, these effects began to render uh, simultaneously on either one. So now let's go back to the sequencer tab and let's put the bars in here. We'll just paste and we'll render. You can see as the bars are now rendered on the strings, but when they render onto the star, they create this spinning and turning effect. So what was nice is is that I was able to create this effect. However, it was very uh, it was very much involved in order to create that effect. And then forget it. If I wanted to do a morph through all of the layers, I had to do a morph starting up here and and chase it down to here to here to here. So um, what is awesome and amazing is what uh, the folks at X Lights did during the summer, and that was they created the ability to make concentric stars and I'll show you here in this example we'll call this concentric star we will change the display type as a star now yours may vary you may have like five different strings I'm I only ran one string of 250 pixels and that's how I did it my start channel obviously is one I only use 750 channels because 250 times three is 750 and then I set my top uh, center and clockwise is where my start point is and now I'm gonna use the star layer size field and I know that the layers in my star are uh, 30 40 50 60 and 70 on the outside so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to the star layer and I'm going to go through and type 30 whoop 30 comma 40 50 60 70 now that I have those layers in there I click OK it's up here I'm gonna click OK whoops <laughs> models let's go back and modify that to put five points in the star oh yes let's put five points in the star yes uh, now we have a full star moves all with one click and what what you see next is is just as awesome um, let's go into the sequencer tab and let's go ahead and add that in I have my sequence elements I'm gonna add that in concentric star move this out of the way I'm gonna bring back the effects here and I'm gonna get rid of the house preview because the concentric star whenever you uh, click on it and let's say you're gonna render the bars effect onto it now you're doing the exact same thing with a model preview you see can see that uh, if you look actually if you bring the house preview up you can see how uneven the star looks in the preview but it makes a much prettier star and if and, and the effects are are much more true to what my model is what my actual star is um, now that's great I can do the exact same thing with this but what about these individual strings if you double click on the concentric star if you double click on your model you open it up to the strand level remember we created five individual strings one with one with 30 with 30 pixels one with 40 and if I open all these up this will be 40 50 60 and 70 so now we have effectively recreated this five uh, five count string one two three four five there we've recreated it and put it in it's built right into the concentric star model so if we want to use let's zoom in out uh, if we zoom in let's say we want to create a chase around the inside of the star uh, let's say it's only one chase and uh, let's say it's a smaller chase size so you've got it only going around one time there you can go ahead and just uh, copy and paste and then render Whoop, paste and then render and now you can see there's the rendered effect on the entire star 
and we can fix this so it only it, it does it once. There we go. Oops, let's do it once on that one too. And now that we've got that working, now, now we can see that we can render different effects different ways on the models and it's actually pretty cool. Um, what's nice is you can change the colors on these. You can, you can delete out and you can only have like three layers going or maybe just the outer and the inner layer and it creates a wicked cool effect. Um, but there's a lot of ways. There, there's one more thing I'll show you and then we'll wrap up the video. But uh, one of the things that I used a lot of was, whoops, wrong one. Uh, was using the pinwheel effect on the whole concentric star model. As you can see here, I have the size of the star uh, pretty large. I have the size of the pinwheel pretty large. You can make smaller if you like. I have, I have two colors selected, so I picked an even number here. I could go to four, and that puts four uh, fan blades on there, the four of the pinwheel blades. And I have the twist set to zero, but if I want to make a little twist, I can do that and it actually looks like it's rendering as on a matrix wood. So what happens when we thicken up the blades of the fan, you can see the effect is rendered in a different way. So there's a lot of cool things you can do. If you want to make it smaller, you can take the size down and it looks more like a circle because it is rendered on as a matrix. Um, you can add on, obviously you can add on more, more legs. Um, but I like the straight. I like the more straight uh, with a slight curve to it. So this was this was an awesome addition. Uh, also, the 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 fact that I could render uh, the uh, morph effect on the whole model and it would fade up and down just in this manner. I thought that was great too. Uh, there there actually is. I, I have a. I think I have something where I created. Uh, a layer below and I added like four layers and then I chased like uh, this uh, strips of the star straight up and down at one time but uh, there's a lot of ways to go in and go ahead and do some different effects um, they've also added now I'll, I'll point this out too if you go into models they've also added the ability to create a new model display type as a circle and if you create it it has the same uh, exact uh, um, uh, concentricity that the star does. If you have, let's say, let's say I was going to make a model, let's call it the the wreath, and let's say it was 250 pixels. Uh, let's say the center is, let's say, 5%, and the, leave the start channels alone. We'll go with top right. I don't know why. That's just the way I like it. And we'll go with, uh, it says here, start with the outer to inner. So we'll start with the outer, and we'll call it the outer is going to be, since I have the 50, or the uh, 70, we'll do 70, comma, 60, comma, 50, whoop, 40, 30. And we'll click OK. Let's see what that does. I really haven't played with this much. But there we go. We've got our concentric, uh, concentric wreath with all of our pixels so pretty much we've created the star into a pixel version onto a wreath it's a circle I guess you could overlay any effects onto this as well from the star model and uh, it would uh, render the effects the exact same way as long as the, the channels are the same so there's a couple things for you guys some food for thought um, if you have any questions please feel free to get in touch with me leave me a message drop me a line uh, it's always good hearing from you. I hope this video really helps some of you guys out. Uh, there's different ways to do different things in X Lights, and uh, a lot of great things I'm sure will be coming for the year 2016. So keep it tuned in here, guys. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a great one.